Hey, good morning, everybody. My name's Amy Howard, and welcome to Maker Monday. Today, we're going to continue this series of using not only ink transfers, but now full color transfers on furniture. If you've known me or followed me for any amount of time, you know that I love rescuing and restoring furniture. And I'll continue to remind everybody that we throw away in the U.S. over 30 million tons of furniture every year. The whole renaissance of a chalk-based paint has really helped us rescue and restore a lot of those pieces of furniture. But so many of you have been working on furniture now for quite some time, and you want to be able to up your game. You want to be able to really make them look more special and more creative and include things like art and gilding and striping and specialty finishes. So I want to be able to continue to kind of go over with you how easy it is to be able to use our full color transfers, what's the difference between just regular ink transfers, and then allow you to be able to see all the different ways that you can use them on different surfaces. All right, so as always, we have examples we want to be able to show you. So take a look over here at some of the things that we've been doing. If you watched me last week, I got so excited over in the studio how we used the ink transfers um, on this breadboard. Now, this is a one-time application, um, but it is pretty transformative in the fact that um, you, this little antique or vintage uh, breadboard can be totally changed now for the holidays and especially for Thanksgiving with this daily bread um, ink transfer on it. If I want this to be permanent, all I have to do is come back and roll on a matte sealer that we have and it will be permanent and I can wash it off with soap and water. But um, here's another example of how we took some mason jars and we're going to use these as decanters to be able to hold wooden spoons in the kitchen. And so we painted each one of the mason jars with our Rescue Restore paint and then we came back with our full color transfers with our script and then adding butterflies or flowers. And that's one thing I'm going to talk a little bit today when we're starting to work on furniture. If I just came back on top of these mason jars and I just placed, say, a butterfly or a flower, and I didn't have the background of the script, they would be floating. So that's really more about composition. Composition, when you're talking about color transfers, are very important. So one of these pieces of furniture that we've painted half, I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit about composition, laying things out, and the importance of that, and how it can really um, increase the value to your piece of furniture, especially if you're rescuing and restoring them. So, I loved these, but to be quite honest with you, we had worked on them in the studio and placed the transfers on here first, and I realized they needed composition, they needed, they looked like they were floating, so we needed to visually anchor them, and we came back and used the script on there. So, that has been one of our better selling transfers of being able to have the scripts. Now, so let me show you what I'm talking about. Look at this sweet little table. Some of you may have seen me do a Facebook Live on this a while back. But if I had just done uh, flowers on the top of this, it wouldn't be near as interesting. We do have a full color transfer um, that it has all these different postcards on it. Can you get really close on the detail on that? I want you to see. It is incredible. You can't get this kind of detail um, that really sets us apart with any type of stencil, with mylar, even a mesh, you can't. The only way to be able to get this kind of gorgeous detail is with our full color ink transfers. They are just amazing. Now, and I always love history behind things. So if you wanna know where the history of this came from, I go to the Paris flea market, not Paris, Tennessee, Paris, France. And when I go to the Paris, France uh, flea market, I will buy old um, letters, I buy old envelopes. These are from my personal collection. And what I did is I took these old French letters, envelopes, and stamps that I have collected, and I made this into a four color stencil. So it really has a history, it has a story. I love that, I think that makes your pieces that much more special that you're gonna be working on. And to be quite honest with you, if you look at that sweet little table that's painted in just this beautiful pale kind of French blue, when someone comes up on it, it's like, that's like a little surprise. Having that trompe l'oeil top like that, trompe l'oeil, it's French, to fool the eye. It's very understated, and that's one thing I want you to be able to learn when you're doing this. 
you want to try to have things that are very classic in nature that are understated that just kind of take it to the next level but make it to where you can still enjoy it for many years to come so what we've done is we've laid out some of our four color transfers here and we've cut them up and you know I believe in a DIY pantry a do-it-yourself pantry so um, those of you that are fortunate enough to have a she shed uh, yay you because you have a place that you can go and you can create I told Jean we have this tiny little guest house um, in our backyard that somebody had used as an exercise studio and it has mirror all around and it kind of gives me a headache sometimes when I go in there um, but I would love to make that into my she shed it's just an area so I could turn on some music and just be able to create um, and we all need to be able to create areas like that so that way we can create some of you it's your guest bedroom some of you it's a garage um, some of you it's the kitchen when everybody's gone so that way that becomes your creative space whatever it is um, you you'll have it to where as you cut these up as you cut these transfers up and you save them then that way it's like oh that's the piece that I need because as you are laying things out whether it's on a piece of furniture a tabletop a mason jar some books anything that you have painted that you're going to be using these on um, you're gonna really be working on composition so let me just show you come over here I'm gonna grab my glasses and my scissors and let's come over here to um, the edge of this little nightstand I do want to show you look at this this is a cocktail table top this was um, a leather top table that we came and put just a piece of glass on that you can do the transfers on the glass how fun is this do you love this love 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 you can do the transfers on the actual table and then put the glass on top of it to protect it or you can do the transfers on the actual glass now I will tell you we went to the hardware store and they cut this glass for us most hardware stores will do that for you that makes this easy guys even if you're like well I don't want to do it on top of my cocktail table um, but I love the idea of doing it on glass that way I can put it on there and then take it off so just showing you this as an option but look how we incorporated some of the larger um, letters and things on this which I think really add and fill in to the negative space so you'll see on this as we laid in the, the leaves and we laid in these three flowers and then some more leaves we came in and we filled in this was all our negative space that would have looked odd if we just laid the flowers in there it would have looked odd you need to be able to come back with words or scripts the other thing is in filling in that negative space don't always do it the same direction you don't always want to come in and do it vertically look how or horizontally look how we had this running this way but we came and ran it the opposite direction that lays it in and really gives you a much more interesting composition so that way whether you're walking around the table if you're sitting on the sofa looking at it or from any other angles from the room it's going to make sense you're not looking at it backwards all right so as always as we are uh, working on these projects and we're doing maker monday please tell me where you're from i love knowing what parts of the country uh, people are from and if you haven't joined our crafting a beautiful life group we have created a group that is going to be sharing um, before and afters and projects that they're doing because remember what we always say, this is all about enjoying the bragging rights. Something else that we're gonna be doing on there is we're gonna be announcing sales before uh, that the public will hear about it so that way you'll know about sales first, whether it's a flash sale, whether it's um, something, a new product introduction, uh, we'll want to make sure that our makers know first, but then you will be the first on that uh, Facebook group. We will be announcing it on there, and we'll be sharing projects, and we've got contests coming up that we'll be sharing on that group. You're going to love some of the contests. A great way to be able to win money and free product during the holidays as we so, so get into um, making everything from our gift wrapping uh, to gifts that we can give to our friends and family. All right, so I'm gonna turn this around. I wanna be able to show you, I'm gonna talk about composition and using transfers this morning. So this is the little nightstand that we got um, at my favorite antique mall. And you see, we are painting half of it. There again, just to be able to see the difference, it looks pretty bad. Um, a lot of you don't know, but the Rescue Restore paint does allow you to be able to go on top of a lacquered surface. Um, you can um, 
have it to where it just make sure you clean it first with our furniture cleaner and then that way you can come on top of it this has two coats and now I'm gonna lay out my um, my transfers now I don't have to do anything else a lot of people will talk about oh well you will wax it first and then put the transfers on no the transfers go on before any sealant or any wax because you want to make sure that it's going to apply more beautifully onto a clean matte surface. That's going to be a really important thing to do. All right, so here's the other thing. Um, you'll notice with these transfers, it is it does have a backing on it. So it's white, and you are going to pull this away like this. When you're touching it, it's going to have, a, a, there's a stickiness to it, which really helps in how you're going to be placing it so it will stick on there. You do want to have just some painter's tape to be able to hold it in place uh, when you're going to be burnishing. So I'm going to work on just a composition. A lot of times as I'm doing pieces, you need to look at this as a whole. And then how is it going to wrap around? What part of the room is it going to be in? As if it's sitting against the bed, say on the right hand side, you're not going to see this side necessarily, but you will this one. And so I would usually have the larger flowers at the bottom lower right hand corner and then feed up at a 45 degree angle to this area where it will wrap around the front of the piece. You wanna make sure that you don't put the largest pieces smack dab in the center. I don't know what it is about us, but that we will think we, we gravitate to the center and we stay away from the edges. When you're looking at composition, it's really important to look at the piece as a whole. So I'm gonna lay this here. Now, as I'm working on this, just as far as what it's gonna look like, because this is a pretty heavy flower, I'm gonna lay this here, and then I'm just gonna press it in a little bit. Now, you'll notice how, this is important. See how I'm having that little flower come down on this banded area? Um, I think that makes it a lot more interesting. Um, I just wanna make sure, as I'm laying this down, like this, that it'll get down in that crevice, and then I'm gonna burnish it onto um, this band. I don't want it to only just be on this flat surface area. That's gonna make it a lot more interesting. So now I'm gonna come back with some painter's tape. Here's the other thing too, guys. If you're catching me live, this is a fantastic opportunity to be able to ask questions. Um, so I'm just gonna put just a little bit here because I'm gonna show you it's a little bit different um, as far as how you're working on these pieces. But this is your time to be able to ask questions. And um, especially if you are scared of doing transfers, if there's something that you're not really familiar with and it's brand new to you. Um, all right, so I'm gonna lay out a little bit more of my composition as far as what I wanna be able to do. I'm gonna probably come in, here's one of my transfers that I had worked with on that little table that I love, love, love this. I love, these are letters again, guys, these are my letters from the Paris Flea Market that I actually scanned and made into a piece of art. So I can cut this and lay this in. So I'm just gonna cut out a little bit here. And I don't have to use all of it if I don't want to. You do wanna make sure that the surface that you're working on is nice and clean and dry and dust free. All right, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna lift this. This allows me to be able to lay some of this script down. Like this. So a lot of people talk about, do we do the script first? My answer is yes. Now, a lot of times, not always, will you have done it first because you may realize later that you needed to be able to come in and fill in some of the composition. Is everybody with me? All right, are we okay on questions? All right, so now, here's where it's different from an ink transfer. If I can have an ink transfer really quickly, I wanna be able to show the difference. We yes. do have a question. Um, Instagram says, do you mean you were able to make your own transfers using an actual letter? So, as in the creating of it, like a lot of times I like people to know from a design aspect where the design came from. So I took my letters that I had from, um, that I had purchased in my private collection from the Paris Flea Market. And 
um, we used it in the manufacturing process. This is not something that you will be able to do yourself, but I just wanted you to know historically where it came from. So that was, that was why I thought that was kind of fun. All right, so these, this is the tissue. They're two totally different things. This is a tissue, this is a one-time application. This is ink that you can transfer on. You can use this ink transfer with the color transfers. The, uh, the difference is in this is one, the quality of this. This is full color ink that is put into a, um, a transfer. There's no halo on this. This is not like a decal or a sticker. This is full ink that is being put directly onto this piece of furniture. So you can distress this. You can come back if you want to. You can use a matte sealer. Um, you can use wax if you want to on it. Now, I will tell you, I'm gonna do just a little bit so you can see. You need to have some type of, uh, I prefer just a piece of wood burnishing tool like this. And you're gonna have to be a little bit more careful when you are working with this tiny French script. Does this person not have the most amazing handwriting? Can you come just, is this Facebook? Can you come on in here? I'd love for you to be able to get close enough so that way they can see what I'm doing. So I want you to do enough to be able to get started. And I'm using quite a bit of pressure here. Now, I want to be able to take this edge. Now, as I'm working on this, I want you to look. It's kind of a, I'll burnish it and I pull it. I'll burnish it and I pull it. See, and some of it, that way if it won't stick, I need to burnish it a little bit more. But it's this constant action of burnishing and pulling. Burnishing, it's totally different than when I'm working with the ink. Ink transfer on the tissue. So this is a fairly heavy duty mylar that this ink has been put on. You can hear the amount of pressure that I'm putting on this. Isn't that gorgeous? So I'm gonna, I don't wanna continue, I don't wanna totally mess this up because I do wanna be able to have this on this piece. It's gonna be really pretty. Um, so I'm gonna leave that there, but I do wanna show you here how to work with a color transfer. I'm gonna go on and lay this down some. If you haven't joined our group, Crafting a Beautiful Life, just pop on over and send a request so that way we can go in and get you approved. And if you're a maker, please go on there and share some of your projects. You guys have got a heads up. You've been working on things and you've got a lot of great projects to be able to show people the versatility of the products here at a maker studio. All right, so I'm just gonna do enough so I can pull that. I may need to burnish it just a little bit more. Yeah. I wanna be able to lay my rose down. what you get for being live. All right, so I may have some missing, but I'm just gonna pull it up and I wanna be able to trim this. To be able to show you. So when you come back in and you're gonna be laying um, a large color piece on it, you are gonna really have to work in burnishing it in and then pulling it away. You know, I don't know if you've been watching us on Instagram. You can use these transfers on lamps. You can use them on lampshades. It's a little bit harder on, on um, paper and fabric lampshades but they will work beautifully. You can use um, our Amy Howard at Home lacquer. I love using that on glass. You can use these transfers on that. So after I get it going just a little bit, let me pull this up. Happy fall, y'all. I just realized that. Today's the first day of fall. And um, all right, so you see how I'll pressure, I'll give it some really hard pressure, and I'll pull it away. Can you see that? But then I'll give it some pressure and I'll pull it away. 
pull it away. Press it in just a little bit more, pull it away. Loving this. What a cute piece this is going to be. I am loving playing with all these different transfers, all the different surfaces that we're able to use them on. I'm so excited about making gifts for Christmas. We're going to have a lot of really great DIY kits for you to be able to give us Christmas. Now look at that. Look at the detail in that, guys. Is that beautiful? This is really transforming this precious piece of furniture. I've got to keep rubbing that in. Now, I'm going to probably, it's talking about composition, I'm going to probably take this and I'm going to come back and I'm going to add some more fonts. I'll cut it here and I'm going to take this all the way down. I'm going to fill in this negative space to where I've got all of this. Then I'm going to come back and I'll probably add another flower here. Hold on just a second. Let me grab one. I love these little bitty pieces because it really has a lot of impact just as far as being able to come back and kind of fill in real strategic areas. I'll come in and add some greenery and then bring a smaller flower. Usually do your weightier pieces at the bottom and then allow it to be a little lighter as you go up. And then I'm going to wrap this around the front and then I'm going to have some smaller letters. I'm going to do some, some fonts again of my French writing on my drawer and then I'm going to have a small little flower kind of wrap around onto my drawer like this and place this out. We're going to be coming on and working on this during the day and letting you see just how easy it is to be able to work with. Um, and then we'll have a half and half. I think that's really powerful for you to be able to see um, just kind of what an ugly duckling looked like before and that whole process of simply cleaning it and using the, um, the Rescue Restore paint and the transfers can truly take it to another level. So stay with us as we're gonna be popping on all during this week showing you how we're transforming, fur transforming furniture um, using our transfers and our ink transfer rub-ons. Have a fantastic week, everybody.